Mr. Agate, how does a, does a startup change under the influence of investors over time? Um, well, I'd say the moment investor is coming on board, uh, the, the startup uh, becomes a joint venture between uh, um, the people that have invented and uh, are driving the idea and the project of the startup and the people that are giving money. Uh, <coughs> and so it becomes, a, let's say, a joint venture between you know, money and brain and hopefully that works together in an efficient way. And how do you actually um, estimate the value of a company before the first investment? Mm, that's a very, I mean, it's a very difficult question because it's very obvious that uh, regardless whether you uh, value a startup at that early stage with a million euro, a hundred thousand euro or 10 million euro, uh, if you would not um, go for investment, but rather sell it on the market, you would probably not getting any dime for it because the, the startup hasn't produced anything except for the idea that very much depends on the founders uh, executing upon this idea. So, um, so the, the valuation is rather calculated the other way around. Yeah? So you estimate how much money you would need in your whole life cycle of the startup, and then you, um, then you split that into various rounds, uh, and then you assume that with each round you lose 20% in the startup, and then you realize how much percentage you need to give for what amount of money today, and out of that you can then uh, create the valuation. So the valuation is the end of the calculation, not the beginning. And if actually the value of a startup is not really accessible, what parameters do you actually decrease um, the, in the incentives of investors to invest into a startup? You mean increase the incentive? Um, well, actually both. <laughs> Decrease, increase. I think <coughs> the, um, the, um, the, the, big, the best incentive for an investor to invest is uh, the team. Yeah? So a lot of investors simply invest into the team, not into the idea, because the common belief is that a good team can even turn a bad idea into a success, whereas a bad team even cannot work on a good, uh, good idea successfully. Um, so that's a, that's a big value driver, and then also the idea you are out for with your startup needs to be an uh, needs to be an idea that has a that has a high impact factor. Yeah, you need really need to change something. You need to change the landscape of a certain industry, and if you do so, then you will also find investors. And um, yeah, in, in your presentation, you, men you mentioned lawsuits being very bad um, in between founders. So what's actually the worst thing that can happen to founders in a legal context? Well, I guess the, the, the worst thing that can happen is that, you know, among the shareholders, you have a so-called deadlock situation. Yeah? So you would go for your next investment round, for example, and uh, then you have one shareholder that, um, uh, that refuses to sign agreements. And may not, may, maybe not for a reason, yeah, because he wants to uh, uh, bargain for better terms, but uh, rather in blackmailing the founders maybe to give him the money back or whatever, he might have second thoughts about his initial investment. And that is a huge problem uh, in the venture capital industry because in any kind of financing round, you always need the signatures of all shareholders. And if even the smallest one uh, refusing to give that, uh, that signature, and by this is a kind of you know, violating the rules of the industry, uh, you are stuck. And this can even cause uh, the end of the startup. And uh, what are actually the specifics um, about investments from a legal context in the tech scene? Um, well, first of all, I mean, there is no, no such thing as an investment into a startup uh, act or law. Yeah? So it's all subject to contract. Uh, that means uh, whatever you want to uh, you want or you need to um, find uh, a legal framework for, you need to take care of that in the agreement. The law itself, the statutory law, doesn't help you. And that's, that's different. Yeah? So, for example, if I would simply buy your car, but then without, uh, without uh, writing this down, I would have certain rights. Yeah? So the car needs to work and all this kind of stuff. And if it's defective, I could, uh, no, I could ask you to repair it and things like that. But, in, but for the specifics of a, uh, of a venture capital investment, there is no law that helps you. So it's all contractually based. And that requires, I guess, most of the times that you involve lawyers. Otherwise, you will not get to a point. And uh, which areas do you actually think will be the most interesting in the future on the intersection between law and IT? 
<coughs> I think uh, well, artificial intelligence and in particular blockchain, uh, blockchain technology will replace a lot of uh, legal transactions that we're seeing today and if that is then even combined with artificial intelligence then maybe the, the community or the society of lawyers might shrink in the future.